Hey you, IT Guy here with another in the Programmer's Guide for Civilian series. Today, top five best Windows apps that you've never heard of. And I'm going to make a big claim right here at the beginning. One of these apps is going to change the way that you use Microsoft Windows. Dig it. And as a bonus, they're all free. So let's drop to the desktop and get busy. This app absolutely blows me away. It's called Quick Look for Windows. And this is what it looks like. Um, you Mac people are going to recognize what this is, right? So I've got a file here, uh, or folder, just full of random files. We got some YAML, some JavaScript, a log file, an MP3, a piece of HTML, some Python, a video, a PNG graphics file, some CSS, a markdown, a text file, a JPEG, and an unnamed file that has no extension. <laughs> so why do I have all this? Well, check this out. I'm going to click on the YAML. Now, normally I double click that, and if I have something associated with it, then that program will launch and it will show me that file. Uh, instead of that, all I'm going to do is press space, and it will show me gitpod.yaml. And in a similar vein, if I click on this JavaScript, and uh, in, instead of launching my IDE or a code editor, I just hit enter, and I can look at the code. And if I need to change it, I can go ahead and, and open it here. Same thing with a log file. God, do I spend lots of time reading log files? Just click, and here we go. I'm on the log file, right? I think you get the idea of how this is going. So how about multimedia files? Does it handle those? Why, yes. Yes, it does, absolutely. Um, I'll show you another cool functionality, too. You'll notice this is an HTML file right here, and there's a piece of Python below it. Now I'm going to click on the HTML file and hit space, and you know what's going to happen. It's going to render that HTML. But instead of going back to that window, I'm just going to use the down arrow key, and that lets the program know I want to see the next file on the list, which is that Python file. So it just shows it to me. Now if I hit the down key again, it'll just move to the next file. It does not care what the file type is. <laughs> Let's get out of the video. Uh, there's a graphic that I made. It just loads that right up. Uh, there's a cascading style sheet that I wrote. just opens that right up. And I have the ability, if I want to edit it, I can just pop it open with Notepad and edit it. Uh, how does it handle Markdown? Well, pretty damn well. There you go. Full Markdown. It's awesome, right? Um, text files, of course, it handles. And I will use the down key again just to go to the next file. And the last file has no, no extension, so let's see how it handles that. It just renders it out. No worries at all. This program is absolutely awesome, so let me show you how to get it. Uh, the links are going to be in the doobly-doo, but this one is hosted on GitHub, and I realize a lot of people who don't code for a living don't have a GitHub account, and you might look at this and go, what the hell? So start here and just scroll down, and you'll see assets right here. The MSI is a Windows installer. The .zip is a zip file with everything compressed in the file. Uh, if you don't know what those two formats are, I strongly suggest the MSI. It'll take a lot of the heavy lifting off. You can also look at the source code, uh, both in zip and in tarball format. I absolutely love this program, and I encourage you to go and get it immediately on to the next one. This is an application called Keeperinia. It's a strange name, I'll explain it later. If you look at the on-screen keyboard, you'll see I'm pressing Control, Windows, and the K key to launch it. This is basically a file launcher, but it's much more powerful than the Windows file launcher you may be used to. So if I start typing in Word, well, I get to W and I already have Word. Uh, if I want an instance of Firefox, I would do that. Chrome, start typing in it, it's there. You get a general idea of how this works, right? Uh, you could do calculator, C-A-L. Okay, also, I could find websites, uh, let's say CNN, and it would give me the HTTP.CNN. I just hit that and it would launch it. Let's not go to CNN, please. Um, you get the basic idea, so let me launch it again, like that with the hotkeys. You can also do things like, I can do, uh, let's do, actually we'll just do an Amazon search, and let's do heroin on Amazon. That, that'll work great. So it's going to search Amazon for heroin, see what we got. Probably, yeah, books. <laughs> I kind of figured that's what it would be. Okay, so you get the basic idea uh, behind the functionality. Let me launch it one more time. Um, it's just, it's super useful for, for everything, uh, and it's extensible as hell, too. So let's actually look at the documentation. I'm going to look at Keeperina here. I'll dismiss this keyboard. 
So quickly find and launch a plethora of items like apps, files, bookmarks, URLs, sessions, yada, 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 language translations on the fly, which I didn't show you. You can just type mathematical expressions in it, although to be fair, most browsers do that now. Base conversion, uh, you know, if you want to go to base 16 or, or whatever you need. Uh, it also generates random uh, UUIDs, passwords, and byte sequences. This thing does a lot, and it is, I enjoy it quite a bit. So that, that's a basic idea of what this does. Uh, I will leave you with this. Most of you know that some of that functionality is provided by Cortana. So you could just hit the Windows key or click the Start button and start typing in uh, a program name. And 80% of the time, Cortana will hit it. But my friend, at what cost? Uh, Cortana is both a resource hog. If you don't believe me and you're running it, open Task Manager right now and look at what that thing is doing and how it is always running. And it is basically malware. Um, from a privacy point of view, it is spyware. So I advise everyone to take Cortana out back in the back 40 and uh, put her down. Moving on to the next one. The vast, vast majority of computers and almost the entire internet run Linux as an operating system and not Windows. There are many reasons why you might want to run Linux under Windows 10. And since 2016, Microsoft has allowed us to do that with a Microsoft Linux Windows subsystem. Recently in 2019, with the Fall Creators Update, they actually shipped the full kernel, a full Linux kernel with Windows. So I'm in a bash terminal right now, and I'm in the Windows file system. And you can see I can just change over to users, and we'll list that out, and we'll change over to my account, and we'll do a listing, and you can see we have everything that we have there. So there are many different reasons why you might want to uh, to do this. Uh, you might want to run Linux under Windows. Let me uh, go ahead and open a new bash terminal. There we go. So you might want to run this because you use a Linux box at work, or you want to learn the Linux command line, or you're getting ready for the Windows uh, software as a service apocalypse that is coming in a couple of years when you're going to be expected to pay for it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, search and watch my video on that, please. So other functionality. So right now, if we look and we'll do a print working directory, so you can see we're in my home account in the subsystem. So I could do just uh, from the command line, I could do git init uh, my app and then we'll change into my app and if we do a listing with the all flag you'll see that there's a git directory and that's all provisioned and ready to go now I could do something from here like code um, let's just do we'll make it fast uh, index dot html and what that'll do is it'll create oh, I spelled it wrong but that's fine um, it will create that and it will launch MS code right into uh, that file so I can edit it all done strictly from the command line. It's opening the remote now. Sorry, things run really slow when I'm screen recording, but you kind of get the idea, and here we are. I can just do whatever I needed to do inside of this directory. So, how does all of this work? How do you do it? Well, everything's gonna be in the doobly-doo, but I'll give you a quick walkthrough. Uh, technical difficulty level of maybe a five on this one, because you do have to use PowerShell. So, either use your Windows key or click over here at the Start menu and type in PowerShell. Don't click enter though, you want to right click on PowerShell and choose run as administrator. That's not it, but you get the general idea. My Cortana is dead. <laughs> so run it as administrator and then copy this line here. Uh, you'll see this line right there. Uh, and I'm going to actually run it here locally. So we'll do PowerShell. Okay. And you just right click to paste that in and you would hit enter at this point. I'm not going to do that because obviously I've already done this. So when you hit enter, you will get a message confirming and what you need to do then is restart your computer when prompted. Uh, do that, navigate back to this site and I'm gonna show you two different ways of picking a Linux distribution. There's an easy way and a more difficult way. The easy way is not optimal security wise because it involves using universal Windows programs or UWPs, but let me show you that first. So open the Microsoft Store. Again, you just click here, type in Microsoft Store, and you'll find it. Um, I actually, actually have it right here. So you'll see the uh, major distros on offer are Ubuntu, 
open source uh, Debian and Kali. Uh, choose Kali if you're into security. If you're new to Linux, uh, Ubuntu is probably the way to go. You'll see all of the lists here. You can also see a Fedora Remix, Penguin, uh, Alpine. If you don't know what those are, stick with Ubuntu and you'll be just fine. So from that distro's app page, you select Get, and Windows will do the rest. Yeah, it's pretty pretty easy to do. Um, I will show you the harder way to do it. Um, we could do it this way, actually. So you can come down here and just use this, copy this one, go back into PowerShell, and, and you would paste that in. And you can do it all right from PowerShell instead of uh, installing it through the Windows Universal program. I think it's pretty awesome. It's not for everybody, but if you have a use for Linux or you've ever been curious about learning Linux, it's an awesome thing to do. We can also do a video at another time if there's anything, any interest in hacking the GUI programs to work under Windows, which you can actually do. And with that, on to the next one. This one is very much a quality of life application. It's a snipping tool. And if you've ever tried to annotate and send somebody a screenshot, you know, you have to press print screen and then you dump it into paint and then uh, it's kind of a nightmare. This is a much better solution. So let me pop open a browser. Let's say I'm in Twitter and I just want to take a shot of just this. That's all I want. So I can just hit new, grab what I want dump it into this and here if I wanted to do markup on it I could totally do markup on it right all over it uh, I could highlight things do whatever you really want to do right kind of a kind of a cool little application now here's the crazy thing this is not a third-party app this ships with Windows it's just Microsoft has never told you about it so let me show you how to get it so on Windows 10 you select the start button or hit the Windows key type in snipping tool you probably get up about to the second P before it will hit and just go ahead and start that and once you've started it and you see I have it started here now go down to your taskbar where where it is and right click it and then yours will say pin to taskbar instead of unpin from taskbar click that and it will always be pinned to your taskbar always at hand for for your use and I think that is an awesome little tool so that's it, the top five best Windows apps as of the winter of 2019. I hope I did deliver on that promise and that one of those applications, if not more, is worth your time to download and try out. Anyway, I've been the IT guy. You've been however the heck you are. Thanks for hanging out in the Soma Batcave and uh, learning a little with me tonight. Much appreciated. See you next time.